break then. Sir Topham had scolded both engines severely. There must be no more tricks, he said. I shall be watching you both. I have to decide which of you is to stay. He strode away. The twins looked glum. Neither wanted to stay without the other. They said so. Then what are we to do? wondered Douglas. Ooch, said Donald. Each of us be as good as the either. Then he'll have to keep his breath. Their plan was good, but they had reckoned without a spiteful brake man. The van had taken a dislike to Douglas. Things always went wrong when Douglas had to take it out. Then his trains were laid, and he was blamed. Douglas began to worry. Yet a muckle nuisance, said Donald one day. It's to leave you behind I've been wanting. You can't, said the man. I'm essential. Ooch, are ye? Donald burst out. You're nothing but a screeching and a noise when all is said and done. Spite Dougie, would ye? Take that. Oh, 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 cried the van. Quit your whining, said Donald severely. There's more coming, if you misbehave. The van behaved better after that. Douglas's trains were punctual, and the twins felt happier. Then, Donald had an accident. He backed into a siding. The rails were slippery. He couldn't stop on time. And crashed through the buffers into a signal box. One moment, the signal man was standing on the stairs. The next, he was sitting on the coal in Donald's tender. He was most annoyed. You clumsy great engine, he scorned. Now you must stay there. You've jammed my switches. It serves you right for spoiling my nice new signal box. Sir Topham Hatt was cross, too. I am disappointed, Donald, he said. I did not expect such, uh, uh, such clumsiness from you. I had decided to send Douglas back and keep you. I'm sorry, sir. But Donald didn't say what he was sorry for. We know, don't we? I should think so, too, Sir Topham Hunt went on indignantly. You have upset my arrangements. It is most inconvenient. Now James will have to help with the goods work while you have your tender mended. James won't like that. Sir Topham Hatt was right. James grumbled dreadfully. One would think, said Douglas, that Donald had his accident on purpose. He went on. I heard tell about an engine and uh, some tar wagons. Gordon and Henry chuckled. Be quiet, said James. It's not funny. Weel, 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 said Douglas innocently. Surely, James, it was not ye. Ye don't say. James didn't say. He was sulky the next morning and wouldn't steam properly. 
When at last he did start, he bumped the freight cars hard. He's cross, sniggered the spiteful brake van. We'll try to make him crosser still. Hold back, whispered the van to the freight cars. Hold back, giggled the freight cars to each other. James did his best, but he was exhausted when they reached Edward's station. Luckily, Douglas was there. Help me up the hill, please, panted James. These freight cars are playing tricks. We'll show them, said Douglas grimly. Come on, come on, come on, puffed James. Get moving, you, get moving, you, puffed Douglas from behind. Slowly but surely, the snorting engines forced the unwilling freight cars up the hill. But James was losing steam. I can't do it. I can't do it, he panted. Leave it to me. Leave it to me, shouted Douglas. He pushed and he puffed so furiously that sparks leaped from his funnel. Ew, groaned the van. I wished I never thought of this. It was squeezed between Douglas and the freight cars. Go on, go on, it screamed, but they took no notice. The guard was anxious. Go steady, he yelled to Douglas. The van is breaking. It was too late. The guard jumped as the van collapsed. He landed safely on the side of the line. I might have known it would be Douglas. I'm sorry, sir. Maybe I was clumsy, but I wouldn't be beaten by your Trixie van. I see, said Sir Topham Hatt. Edward brought workmen to clear the mess. Douglas was grand, sir, he said. James had no steam left, but Douglas worked hard enough for three. I heard him from my yard. Two would have been enough, said Sir Topham Hatt dryly. I want to be fair, Douglas, he went on. I admire your determination, but... I don't know. I really don't know. He turned and walked thoughtfully away. <laughs>